Good evening, and welcome to the Monday, September 16, 2013 meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. The council has already been in executive session and has taken role, and we will now reconvene back into open session, and I would ask that you join me now in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on this evening's agenda is comments, uh, reports by city officers. And the first item is comments by Mayor. I do want to make one particular comment about an event that I think we all saw and where many of us were a part of, uh, and if not, were at least there, was the BMW Championship over the weekend. I think to say that it reflected well on the community would be an understatement. Uh, I want to commend everyone who was involved in the planning and the execution of that event. Um, I, I tell you, as a Lake Forester, I could not have been more proud this weekend, and I think we all felt the same way. Um, I had an opportunity to spend uh, some time off and on with all of our public safety folks, police officers, paramedics, firefighters, uh, folks from public service and public works. I can tell you, it, it, it could not have gone much better. And uh, I want to commend everyone, Bob, you and your staff, uh, and certainly everyone from the WGA, from Conway Farms, from BMW and the Tour. Uh, it was an extremely wonderful event of which our community, I think, can be very proud. And I think Conway Farms can be very proud as well. And uh, I think, as I said, uh, there's no doubt that every, if every one of us uh, who were out there or watched it on TV or even heard about it, uh, if that didn't make you proud to live in this community, there's not much you can. So uh, congratulations <coughs> to this community because it was very well done and, and I think we should all be very proud of the event. Next item I'd like to uh, to handle is a resolution of sympathy this evening for former Mayor Kent Chandler, Jr., and I'd like to read this resolution, if I may. Whereas on behalf of the City of Lake Forest, the City Council expresses its sadness at the profound loss of Kent Chandler, Jr. on September 7, 2013, and whereas Kent Chandler was a lifelong and valued resident of Lake Forest, a former student of the Bell School, Gorton School, serving locally on the boards of Lake Forest Country Day School, on Wencia Club, Lake Forest Hospital, the Buchanan Family Foundation, as well as on the boards of numerous regional organizations. And whereas Ken Chandler carried on a family legacy like his father and others before him, serving the city as mayor of Lake Forest from 1970 to 1973, and during which time led the city council in redrafting zoning and planning ordinances, Gorton School became Gorton Community Center, and the Gorton and Cemetery Commissions were established. And whereas Ken Chandler, prior to being elected mayor, served the City of Lake Forest as Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals on the Plan Commission and the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners. And whereas Ken Chandler was a graduate of Yale University, University of Michigan's School of Law, and was a partner at Wilson and McElveen. Whereas Ken Chandler served his country in the Pacific during World War II and retired with the rank of major. And whereas Kent Chandler enjoyed golf, photography, bird watching, and his family's cabin in Upper Michigan. Whereas Ch Kent Chandler, a beloved husband to the late Francis Robertson Chandler, loving father of Gail and Robertson, grandfather of six, brother of Henry and Bruce, uncle to many nieces and nephews. And whereas Kent Chandler was a kind and gracious man who deeply loved his family, community, and fellow residents, his contributions to Lake Forest were significant and he will truly be missed. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council that its deepest sympathy goes out to his family. May I have an approval of this resolution? Please? So moved. Do second. I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, unanimously approved. The, our fan, your, the Chandler family is with us this evening. Welcome. Please accept our sincere sympathy and thank you uh, on behalf of this community for the great contributions he made to Lake Forest. All right, next item on the agenda, a resolution approving the establishment of a joint task force with the Lake Bluff Park District to explore shared services and capital opportunities related to parks and recreation. Um, this is a, a, um, 
item, which really has taken shape, I, I would say, probably over the last four or five months. Um, some of the discussions that I've had with Bob and with staff have been focused around not just this particular item, but how we as a community can uh, best provide services, best provide uh, a variety of things to our residents, but doing it in the most effective and cost-efficient manner. And so one of the items that has been brought up for discussion has been the idea of exploring ways to work with the Lake Bluff Park District and uh, evaluate further opportunities for some shared services and shared relationships there. We do some shared services, some classes I know uh, already, so we, ha we do have some relationship there, but I think it's only prudent for us as a community uh, it's only certainly only prudent for us to explore ways to deliver great service at the most effective possible price. So the idea is to create a task force that will um, basically look at ways to combine those services, look at ways to deliver them more cost effectively. We may end up after a period of several months uh, determining there's not much we can do. Uh, we may end up finding there are certainly opportunities for us to do things more efficiently and deliver them more cost effectively. So the intent would be to develop this task force. I would also ask anyone who'd like to apply uh, in the community to do so, to contact uh, City Manager Kiley and express your interest. I think the intent would be to, to formulate the group by the end of September uh, and have the first meeting sometime in early October. Bob, any comments from you on that? Yeah, the only thing I would add is is that I think this is consistent with some of the things that we talked about in our strategic planning exercise too, that we don't want to have redundant facilities if we don't need them. And I think in this day and age, whether it's uh, the Lake Bluff Park District, whether it's the schools, whatever the agency might be, that we need to work with those agencies so that we can provide the facilities in the most economical way possible. Any comments by questions by members of the council? Uh, if not, I'd like to ask for approval of, of the resolution. So moved. I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please, Biddy. <coughs> Alderman Novick? Aye. Alderman Walbeck? <coughs> Aye. Alderman Tack? Aye. Alderman Reisenberg? Aye. Alderman Palmer? Aye. Alderman Edelman? Aye. Six yay, zero nay. Motion carries. And again, I would encourage anyone who is interested in serving on the task force to either contact uh, Bob or go to the uh, volunteer profile sheet on the city's website and fill out the, the profile sheet and we are eager to move that process forward. Those end my comments tonight. Next item on the agenda, comments by city manager Bob Kyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Let me just take it out of order here very briefly because uh, I'm not sure I could say it much better than the mayor with respect to the BMW tournament this weekend only that we will be asking representatives of the Conway Golf Course and the WGA to see if they can be in attendance at your October 7th meeting to bring forward some of the statistics, the data, uh, attendance records, and those kinds of things so we get a full report on how things went. Uh, we will be also debriefing both at a staff level and with those agencies what went right, what didn't go so well, what could we do differently in the future and so forth, but I think for the most part uh, when you took a look at the magnitude of people that were visiting our community and uh, the what I call the tiger effect when he finishes you got 30,000 people who all want to leave at the same time uh, makes it a little challenging but I think it went without incident uh, we didn't have any major major uh, casualties or fatalities a lot of bee stings uh, because of the, uh, the weather we had and the time of year that we had but other than that, I think it went very well, and I think uh, people really appreciated the event and the venue, and uh, we'll be hearing more about that at the October 7th meeting. So I want to thank the, all the staff members for all their hard work and efforts. Some <coughs> of them are, I think, home finally getting sleep now, too, after that period of time. Uh, first item on my agenda is uh, the um, uh, community spotlight, which we're very pleased to have this evening. The president of Lake Forest College, Steve Scutt, who is going to give us a little uh, foreshadowing of what's uh, on store and, and also talking about the new dorm that just opened up. So, Steve. Thanks very much, Bob. Where, Mr. Mayor, where would you like me? Over here. Over right there. Pat. Yeah. I have no high-tech presentation tonight, just, just the yellow pad and comments. <laughs> but uh, uh, I appreciate very much the opportunity to be with you tonight, Mr. Mayor, members of, of City Council. And 
give you just a quick update on uh, the city of Lake Forest's first original educational institution, Lake Forest College. Um, it is, um, I think, maybe the right way for me to start by saying what a wonderful community this is to be part of. And after 12 years at the college, I can really say on behalf of everybody who works there, we feel privileged to be part of this community. And one of the things that it does for us in combination with the city of Chicago, that is, of course, just 30 miles south of here, is give us a fairly unique proposition that we have to sell, if you will, to prospective students and their parents as they look at colleges in this competitive environment that we're in. For us to be able to offer them an experience for four years of being at a college like, like Lake Forest in a community like this one on a campus like ours, and at the same time have access to all the, uh, the resources that a city like Chicago has to offer, educational, recreational, and otherwise. It's a pretty unique proposition and one that we really uh, take advantage of in, in all kinds of ways. But it starts right here uh, with our, our appreciation for being part of this community as we have for, for so many years. Um, one of the things, though, that that, or I guess one of the, the, the demonstrations of the value of that would be this. Um, our enrollment has sort of carefully grown, really. We've, we've been very much on top of this and watched it carefully, but tried to move it in a gradual pattern from about 1,200 students a little over a decade ago to close to 1,600 now. So that's enrollment growth of a little bit more than 25% in that period of time. Uh, and we have done that as a result of having a steadily increasing applicant pool. <coughs> So for this year's first year class, for example, we had about 3,700 applicants from across the country and around the world, really, and that also is about two and a half times the number of applicants the college had uh, in the year 2000. So there's been real progress in sort of building and uh, communicating the reputation of the college, the value of being in this community and what we have to offer that is really, uh, I think, paying off uh, in a very nice way for us on campus. Just to say another word about that student body, it sometimes surprises uh, people to learn that our students not only come from the state of Illinois and for that matter across this country, because we have students from just about every state. I think the last count was 47 states in the United States. But in addition to that, 80 different countries around the world. About 16% of our student body is international, coming again from all over the place. And so what that does for an 18 to 22 year old on our campus is provide a really unusual experience to be part of a very diverse geographically and other ways, diverse student body and an opportunity to learn from each other. And that's something again that we're very proud of and uh, is very much at sort of the core of our identity. Our academic programs are also a big attraction. I'll just describe them in this way. We offer both traditional liberal arts subjects, all of those you would think of at the same time that we also offer a growing range of pre-professional programs in majors such as finance, neuroscience, communication, majors that are actually fairly unusual for a college of our kind and size. And again, the combination of both the traditional and newer pre-professional programs gives our students a real range of choice and is a real attraction to the college today as well. We also, another thing that many people don't uh, or are only coming to realize, we offer a large range of joint degree programs with other institutions uh, in the Chicago area and outside for that matter. So that an easy example would be with four or five different law schools at this point now, we have joint accelerated programs so that a student who wishes to do so can come to Lake Forest and in six years, instead of the standard seven, get a Lake Forest College BA and a JD from a cooperating law school as well, thereby being a year early in entering the law market, if you will, and also saving a year's tuition in the, in, in the process. So those joint degree programs are also increasingly popular and uh, part of our, our marquee uh, attractions. Internships, uh, a very big part of the program that we have at the college, both a broad range of internships locally in this community and nearby and also in the city. For those that are in the city of Chicago, for three years now we've offered a residential program downtown in the loop so the juniors and seniors who want to do a semester long internship, broad range of different internships in the city can live there as well while still being part of the Lake Forest College community. And some of them also take courses while downtown in addition to their internships at the Art Institute of Chicago, uh, DePaul, Loyola, and other institutions in the city. 
our students succeed. Perhaps the most important thing for me to say uh, today is that our students are succeeding very well. Um, two pieces of evidence of that. Uh, for the last several years, we conduct every six months after every graduation. We do a six month out survey of our students who recently graduated and ask them uh, if they are placed satisfactorily, if they're happy about their placement. And for a couple of years running now, we've had better than a 90% placement rate in terms of our students who are either starting their careers or are already in graduate or professional school. And that also is sort of a major uh, point of distinction and selling point for the college today. Um, a lot of investment in our campus. Uh, anyone who has sort of driven down Sheridan Road in recent years at almost any time has probably been able to see something going on. Uh, about $100 million over the last decade or 12 years uh, in campus improvements, including the Donnelly and Lee Library, uh, the Moore Student Center, Buchanan Hall, uh, the new Sports and Recreation Center, uh, and most, most recently, uh, new Moore Hall, a 230-bed residence hall on South Campus that was completed just a little over a month ago, uh, helping to uh, take care of the enrollment growth that I mentioned earlier. So a lot of construction, a lot of campus improvement, and uh, I need to just say a word of thanks, certainly to all of you and to the city of Lake Forest, but also to the planning director, Kathy Cerniak, and to our illustrious alumnus, Bob Kiley, <laughs> um, for a lot of cooperation that we've had from the city uh, in a lot of the projects that we've had underway. And I really mean to, mean to emphasize that. The relationship with the city has been tremendously beneficial to the college, and we're very grateful for all the help that we've had uh, in this campus development that we've been engaged in. Um, in terms of our role in the community, I'd mention just a few things quickly. First, again, just a couple of basic facts. We employ today about 350 people at the college, faculty and staff. Between 40 and 50 of those employees live in Lake Forest right now. Many others live nearby in surrounding communities. All are here on a regular basis during the work week and all participate in different ways in this community. Um, our annual operating budget, the majority of which is for salary and compensation, is about $43 million. And so that, again, is a contribution, I think, to the economy of Lake Forest that's important, uh, certainly for all of us to keep in mind. Um, perhaps even more importantly, other forms of community involvement. We love to have the community, all of you, anyone who might be listening tonight, come to the college, frankly, as often as possible. There's always something going on, a range of attractions from this week's home conference opener in football against Grinnell College at one o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and I will say baldly that there isn't a prettier place to watch a football game on a Saturday afternoon than Farwell Field at Lake Forest College. So I invite all of you out to that game. Uh, we're presently 2-0 and in football this year, so it's starting off well. Um, last year, football, men's and women's soccer, handball, all won championships. So there's always a lot of athletic competition going on and we're faring very well. On the music scene, uh, the Lake Forest Lyrica Chamber Music Program on Sunday afternoons, both in the fall and the spring, every Sunday, not every Sunday afternoon, three or four times each semester, brings leading groups to college. That starts also this coming Sunday at three o'clock when a chamber group from the Republic of Georgia will visit the campus and give a, give a performance uh, in our chapel uh, in the middle campus area. Um, homecoming this year is the weekend of October 4th and 5th. And, uh, we always love to see community members out for homecoming as well. It really uh, is great for everyone involved to have the community participating in that, uh, that special event as well as our alumni who come back. Just in the last couple of minutes, just a couple of words, a uh, few words about the future um, on this, I think, strong foundation that I've tried to paint quickly for you here. Uh, the future <coughs> is, frankly, um, even with our current strength, it's a challenging proposition. It's a challenging proposition in higher education generally at this point, uh, certainly across the country. Uh, the level of competition, I've been in higher education for going on 20 years now, and I've never experienced the level of competition that we see today. Competition of various kinds, <coughs> certainly from other small colleges across the country, competition for students and for faculty, uh, but also for us in particular competition from or involving a real population of students who simply want to go to school in the Chicago area, and who will, as a result of that, look at us, look at DePaul, look at Loyola, look at Northwestern, look at the Art Institute, <coughs> students who have, um, as sort of the number one consideration, a desire to be in or near Chicago, 
So a whole different kind of competition in that regard too. Um, University of Illinois, other large land grant universities are increasingly sources of competition for us in a way that used not to really be the case. We used to be almost separate worlds. Very much not the case now. And on the horizon, still not, I guess I would say, a major reality for us, but certainly something on the horizon that we look at and see coming is new forms of competition in the online sphere um, <laughs> that uh, I think we're getting ready for in different ways, but that are still very much in front of us. So in that competitive environment, um, we're in or we're nearing the end actually of a formal planning process at the college looking immediately at the next five years and what, uh, what our priorities for that period of time ought to be. And I'll just cite a couple of things in that regard. First, no, no news to anyone who is either uh, the parent of a college-going student or connected to a college-going student. Um, never, never before has the interest in what happens immediately after college been as great as it is today in terms of prospective students or their parents. Um, an interest in so-called return on investment in the college career uh, is very much abroad now. As a result of that, we're placing a lot of emphasis on our own career preparation programs and how we really help students link what they learn on campus across all the different majors to uh, uh, practical opportunities after graduation. And we're getting uh, our placement rate as one piece of evidence of how well we're doing at that, but it's a continuing source of focus for the college as it needs to be. Beyond that then, um, really just a need to emphasize what I think of as distinctive programs at the college because it's no longer good enough to try to be good sort of across the board. There have to be attention getters, stage setters, if you will, programs that are really points of distinction for an institution as you try to keep building a reputation. And so majors like some of those that I mentioned earlier, sort of unique majors for a college like ours, communication, finance, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, neuroscience, those are all important. Um, and they all, each of them attracts a certain distinctive cohort of students to the college today, and I hope we'll continue to do so. One other in this regard, a very strong department, historically strong department at the college is our art history department. Uh, and that in connection with two minors that we now offer in Renaissance studies and museum studies is an area of real strength, unusual strength for the college. Some of our most prestigious faculty are involved in this area. Uh, we attract students again from across the country to these programs. Some of our alumni include in the art history realm, the current director of the Guggenheim Museum in New York, the second in command of the Museum of Modern, uh, Modern Art in New York, the head of the Pennsylvania Academy. So a real niche in a way for the college. And one of the things that we will be asking actually a week from tonight before the zoning board, this is just advance notice for you and anyone who might be listening, is that we'll be asking the zoning board for a special use permit. Uh, we hope to approve um, a future gift by college trustee and Lake Forest resident Rob Krebs of his home on Walden Lane, which is a model of an Italian villa filled with Renaissance art that Rob and his wife Anne have brought back from Italy over about 20 years uh, to be used in the future when this might happen <coughs> to come to pass if approved as a kind of private study center for Renaissance studies uh, connected to Lake Forest College. If that is approved, if we get the special use permit that we will be seeking, I can tell you there's nothing like it uh, in our realm of competition anywhere. And it would be, again, another real point of distinction for the college in an area that's very important to us. But that is uh, future. And as I said, that's really just a word of sort of advance notice uh, uh, for this hearing tonight and uh, uh, for anyone who might be listening. But with that, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council, I'd be happy to stop and either take any questions you might have or if you prefer, sit down. Okay. Questions? Questions? Thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. Steve, thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. The uh, final item under my report, and I won't take much of your time, um, in your packet was an update of the um, strategic planning tracking report dated September 1, 2013. And the real purpose of this is to give you an update, give the community an update, as this will be posted on the city's website of various activities that have taken place since the council adopted the strategic plan, the objectives, 
that were set forth in that plan, making sure that everybody, including the residents of the community, recognize that this is not a, a plan that was just put on the shelf and is collecting dust, but it's really being actively implemented as we go forward. A couple of quick highlights uh, under fiscal stewardship. The uh, objective to identify three operational programs to evaluate for service delivery modifications. Um, Alderman Palmer serves on the task force for the shared fire service. We've had multiple meetings. One of the components of those meetings is the central dispatching study. That will be coming to the city council at the October 7th meeting for just general discussion. Uh, the uh, study has identified five options and the group I think is narrow, trying to narrow down those five options. So there'll be some policy questions related to the future central dispatching uh, in the city. And also a component of that too is we are participating with, I think there's five other municipalities in a fleet service study to see if there's ways that we can uh, provide um, uh, some um, common shared services within the fleet operations. Uh, under the community character and livability was the uh, discussion about the uh, community engagement forums. And I know we have another one coming up this coming Thursday, and I'm sure Alderman Waldick will talk about that. We have, I think, uh, have had five, I would say, very successful uh, forums up to this point. We've got three left. At the end of this year, after we've done all eight, we'll just talk amongst ourselves as to what we want to do going forward in 2014. Do we want to continue them? Do we want to modify them slightly? What worked? What didn't work? Uh, and so forth. So those have um, been a real attempt there to try and engage the community in ways that we haven't done before because it's always challenging. Everybody's so busy, but we're trying to get people more involved early on in the process and not uh, when the decision has already been uh, made or when the recommendation's already been made by the plan commission or one of our other boards and is before the city council. And at that point, it's pretty far down the road. A uh, couple of other uh, quick things. The, uh, one of the items here was also the, uh, the discussion on the golf course well for irrigation under the environmental stewardship. Uh, the golf advisory committee has heard an initial presentation. I believe the park and rec board is also going to hear the report from Kemper sports on the well. So that likely will be probably will be bringing that to you at the September 30th, uh, meeting the, uh, meeting that we're having to talk about just fiscal issues and the budget in general. And, uh, I think those are some of the highlights. I'll be happy to answer any questions that the alderman might have specifically with respect to any of the almost hundreds of things that are listed in the strategic plan, but assured, uh, wanted to assure you and the, and the residents that the staff is working hard uh, to try and move the ball forward on many of these issues. We have prioritized some of them, and so if you feel that some which uh, are not currently being moved, uh, you feel that we should prioritize them, move them up, we're happy to do that as we look forward as well. But with that, uh, I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions for Bob on that? And if not, that completes my report for this evening. I, I have one. Mm -hmm. um, we've had discussion last uh, last meeting, last council meeting regarding sanitation. Mm -hmm. When will that come before formally come before uh, council? Probably is going to be on the September 30th meeting as well, because staffs are looking for a little more direction from the council, specifically on what you would like for us to explore and evaluate. So we'll have that as a discussion point at the September 30th meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right, Bob, thank you very much. The next item on the agenda, comments by council members. One, well, as Bob just mentioned, our next community engagement forum is this Thursday, September 19th at 7 p.m. at Gordon Community Center. Um, we're gonna be discussing the vitality of the Central Business District, or perhaps more accurately, the continued vitality of the Central Business District. Uh, what's on everyone's minds, what's working, what's not. Um, there is a survey online, uh, which I urge everyone to, fill, um, to, to take. It only takes a few minutes, and we'll be comparing those results um, to the results of a survey from 2008. So looking forward to a lot of great community input and some really good discussion. Two, Thank you. Two quickies. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunday, September 29th, the world's best block party, Lake Forest Open Lands, Bagpipes and Bonfire over at Eloa. And then October 12th at Eloa, 
there's a native tree sale. Thank you. you want to give him a oh, sorry. Oh, and I take that back. It's <laughs> Saturday, October 12th from 9 to noon. And there'll be discussion about the emerald ash borer, and then trees, native tree varieties will be offered for sale from 10 till noon. That's in conjunction, or it's a follow up to our community engagement forum on native planting. Any other comments by Alderman? Actually, a question, and I don't know if uh, Mike might know this, if he's uh, awake back there after this weekend, but I, I believe there's a, a pickup date for dangerous chemicals, paints. Uh, it might be in late September. Uh, it is. I don't know the date off the top of my head. It's typically the third Saturday in September, uh, right at the Municipal Services uh, Complex out on Field Drive, but we can... That date, I believe, is posted on our website. But okay. yes, it's uh, probably the third weekend in September. But if they check the website, it's a great opportunity yes. to get those old paint cans out of the basement. Absolutely, and, and everything can be disposed of free. There's okay. no charge. I'll it doesn't include latex paint, though, right? You are correct. It does not include latex paint. We, uh, <laughs> September 28th. September 28th. Okay, at municipal services? Uh, from 8 a.m. to 2.30 in the afternoon at municipal services. The old one or the new one? The old one. Uh, okay. 800 Northfield Drive, the new one. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> Any other comments by the council or questions? Thank you. We'll move on. Next item on the agenda is the opportunity for citizens to address the city council on non-agenda items. Anyone here this evening that would like to address the council on any non-agenda item? Seeing none, we'll move on. Next item is items for omnibus vote consideration. There are seven of those tonight. Uh, I will read each of them. If anyone on the council would like to take that, any of those items separately, we will do so. Otherwise, we'll ask for a vote on all seven at the end. Item number one, approval of the September 3, 2013 City Council Minutes. Item number two, award of purchase for the replacement of a log chipper for the forestry section. Item number three, award of a one-year contract for office supplies. Item number four, consideration of ordinances approving recommendations from the Building Review Board. First reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. Item number five, consideration of ordinances approving recommendations from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Again, first reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. Item number six, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Historic Preservation Commission. First reading and if desired by the City Council, final approval. And item number seven, approval of a lease agreement with Lake Forest Bank and Trust for the drive up ATM facility and premises located at 70 North Bank Lane. Any of those items, uh, anyone on the council wish to take separately? If not, I'd ask for a motion to approve all as part of the omnibus. And I'll move to approve all seven omnibus items. Do we have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please, Biddy. If, just for clarification, the motion is also for the first reading and approval of the various plan commission or um, zoning board, historic preservation and building review board. Correct. Alderman Novit. Aye. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Palmer. Aye. Alderman Edelman. Aye. Six yay, zero nay, motion carries. Thank you, Betty, very much. Next item on the agenda, ordinances, consideration of an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a general obligation refunding bonds, series 2013, final reading presented by Elizabeth Holub, finance director. Elizabeth. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Um, the City Council approved first reading of this bond ordinance on September 3rd. However, you didn't have any of the financials yet due to the fact that the online auction occurred this morning on the bond issue. So I wanted to give you a brief summary of the results of the auction this morning. First of all, there were two documents at your dais, uh, at your place settings. Um, those were uh, prepared by our business partners related to this issue. The first was a packet on Spear Financial letterhead. Um, I am joined this evening by Dan Forbes of Spear Financial, uh, who he and his team helped uh, tremendously on the preparation of the bond issue, the preparation of the official statement, and working with Moody's on the bond rating, as well as holding the auction this morning. The second is the final bond ordinance prepared by Bond Council, which is Lou Greenbaum of Catton, Muchen, and Rosenman. 
Uh, that is the document that was in your packet, but um, with all of the low bid information inserted. So that would be the final ordinance um, subject to your consideration this evening. Um, just as a brief background, uh, we've discussed this on a number of occasions, um, but just as a reminder, we had initially estimated this refunding issue at $9.84 million. Um, the purpose of the refunding is to refinance $9.665 million in bonds issued in 2010A. Uh, they are commonly referred to as the MS bonds because they financed a majority of the construction of the new municipal services facility. <coughs> There were four specific reasons uh, that warranted consideration and pursuit of the refunding, refunding this year. Uh, one was that the interest rate environment remained competitive and uh, predictions were that rates would continue to rise. Um, the 2010A issue was first callable on or after December 15th, 2013. So earlier this year, we began to stock, talk about that as a potential. The city had no other bond plans for calendar year 2013, so the issue could be issued as bank qualified debt, giving the city uh, an additional advantage from an interest rate standpoint. And the refunding would provide added flexibility for the redevelopment of the Laurel Avenue property um, because the 2010A bonds were going to come due in 2015, um, and the city wanted to be uh, very deliberative in its, in its efforts on the redevelopment of this property, uh, and refunding this issue would add flexibility to do that. Um, as part of the refunding issue, Moody's Investor Service um, provided a rating um, on September 12th, last Thursday, Moody's Investor Service did assign a AAA rating to the issue, as well as affirm the AAA rating on the city's outstanding obligations. So that does continue to affirm uh, that the city does have the highest municipal bond rating available um, in the country and continues to be in a very elite group um, by holding that AAA rating. Uh, as I noted earlier, the bond auction was conducted this morning. Five bids were received. Uh, the lowest bid was received by PNC Capital Markets, LLC. Um, due to the interest rate um, falling slightly below the initial projections, the issue was adjusted to nine point set, just over $9.7 million. So the principal amount could be brought down, and the true interest cost of 3.64% for the issue was within the projections that had been presented to the council previously. Um, this graph shows uh, a couple of things. The blue bar just above the $2.5 million is the city's self-imposed debt service levy cap on debt service for issues supported by the property tax levy. Um, so we keep all outstanding property tax supported debt below that line. Um, the red represents current outstanding debt. Uh, I went back a few years uh, to 2008 to reflect the savings that the city realized on the refundings in 2011 uh, when the interest rate environment was extremely competitive. And the blue shows the result of the auction this morning and shows how that total property tax supported debt service is adjusted by the refunding issue proposed this evening. Um, the next, um, adds to that graph the, the light green, which is the only new money currently projected by the city, which is a $4.8 million in 2014 to support the five-year capital improvement program. So what this shows is that based on current projections, both of those issues can still be accommodated within a 20-year window and under the debt service levy cap of the city. And finally, it is um, Dan Forbes and I's joint recommendation that the City Council grant final approval of the ordinance authorizing the issuance of general obligation refunding bonds. And I will be happy to answer any other questions. Questions for Elizabeth? How does the interest rate that we ended up with compare with what we had hoped to get? Um, we had our initial projections that we had presented in July and again two weeks ago was an estimate of 3.97 interest, true interest costs, and we got a 3.64. So we did about 30 basis points better. Um, so I applaud Dan Forbes and thank him for the conservative estimates because it's always nice to report good news. <laughs> Any other questions? Any comments or questions from the public on this matter? If not, I'll look for a motion to grant final approval of the bond ordinance. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Roll call vote, please, Biddy. Alderman Novit. Aye. Alderman Waldeck. Aye. Alderman Tack. Aye. Alderman Reisenberg. Aye. Alderman Palmer. Aye. Alderman Edelman. Aye. 
Six yay, zero nay, motion carries. Thank you, Betty, very much. Uh, Elizabeth, congratulations to you and Dan and to your team. I also want to congratulate you and your team for the reaffirmation of the AAA bond rating. That is not something that is, uh, goes without notice and is not certainly something that happens very frequently. And I think you have made all of us very proud that uh, we've kept that bond rating. So thank you for your great work. Uh, next item on the agenda, new business. Any new business tonight to come before the council? I'm sensing everyone is BMW tired. <laughs> Uh, additional items for council discussion. Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> 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 All right, though. All right. Yeah.